Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Day Trading Frank. It is January 14th, 2019, 8.08 p.m. We love eights, the infinite loop in mathematical numerals. Um, full disclosure, these uh, sessions are purely for, these strategic webinar sessions are purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. The session will be recorded and uploaded to the Google YouTube channel, Clueless A Trading. Please spread the word to all your friends, anyone who wants to learn the reality of the market, and at the same time, make some real money. Um, they, these sessions are available for viewing on the Google YouTube channel. Do follow us on Instagram. The Instagram uh, account is primarily for promotional purposes. We highlight some of our more spectacular trades it is not a real-time service it is no i normally upload a couple of charts and comments at the end of the day early evening on that note let us begin so tonight's session is uh i always keep on saying that but then i keep on rambling on uh but tonight's session I like to keep it concise and the topic of the session is focus F-O-C-U-S, focus. Focusing on every single line, focusing on every single pattern, and focusing on what makes us money, which is basically the tactical charts. It is not my opinions, even though I have many. It is not your opinions or our emotions, how we feel, good or bad, that makes us money. It is what the charts are telling us or how we are reading it and the probability of whether or not the upside or the downside, whichever way we are positioned at that time, is going to deliver us our profits. That's just the way it is. So saying all that, a um, couple of broad points. The markets are actually doing great, technically speaking. Um, in between, intraday volatility is something that we have to accept and manage. And as long as the ranges, the patterns, and uh, the levels are within our tradable limits, given the fact that we are generally at this point long to the levels that I've posted repeatedly, then in that case, we don't need to flip around like M-O-H-T-R. We call, uh, that's a acronym that I use, monkeys on a hot tin roof. We don't need to jump around like that. We need to look to see how we can cost average down. If we're getting, let's say, a 60-point pullback, or this morning we got a 200 or some point pullback, and then before that we almost went positive after that, and then we ended the day down 100, or roughly 100 points, I can remember. So the point is that... Um, by the way, the E-mini futures right now are ramping. We are up 14 points. I'll be the first one to tell you, because I'm a straight shooter, that it doesn't mean anything for tomorrow's open. But it does mean something when we analyze the charts. And it's always good to see futures up 13, 14 points at, uh, as the China markets are about to open. So we know that. So we always feel good if the trade is going our way. We're all traders after all. Some of us as professional traders, I'd like to be as disciplined as possible. I do not feel good every day, but I certainly feel good every week, every month, or overall every year in general. So the point is that um, we need to be very disciplined. It's a very tough, uh, um, trading discipline is a, I don't want to get into it too much, but it's extreme. That's the, toughest part about the business. We all are all about instant gratification. You know, that's what our society is uh, kind of conditioned us to. Instant gratification, instant coffee, instant this, instant that, instant open the packet and, and you know, fry the food. But that doesn't make us healthy. What makes us healthy is a great home-cooked meal with good, good, homegrown, farm-grown, natural stuff. And that takes time. And the same thing with trading. It requires trading discipline. And it's not something you just acquire in one day. It takes years. It takes months. 
But if you are being guided by clueless aid trading on the concept and the methodology of tactical charts, then the discipline, acquiring the discipline becomes easier. Nobody taught me the way I teach people. Because really what I do is I share my methodology, my trading um, philosophy, and everything. And I share it clearly, openly. There's no hidden secret. You guys are a lot smarter than me in many cases. I know that. But I'm a faster learner and a quicker adapter. How about that? Okay. But the charts that I keep on showing repeatedly, that I construct on a real-time basis every single day, because that's my job, and that's why you guys are subscribing to my service. This is probably the only service that is, that is giving you real-time directions on the market so you are fully aware of what's going on and you don't have to be left, uh, you don't, you're not lost in the woods. Because that's what a lot of other services do. I'm not slamming other services, but it, this is a capitalist. Uh, we're capitalists. So I do have to point out that the competition out there that some of you subscribe to, and that's all fine and good. Um, and I've checked many. They are not even close to the precision levels. The hand-to-hand -hand guidance. Step-by-step -step guidance, I should say, that I deliver every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year here at Clueless Aid Training. So for some of you who are newer members or returning members, always remember, I'm not always going to be right. But I am a heck of a lot more right than most people out there. And when it comes to the broader theme, I am generally very, very right. Because I am a more macro-orientated trader looking at swing trades and long-term directions and things like that. And in between, we make a heck of a lot of great profits on intraday trading, overnight trading, and such. Futures, e-mini futures on the Globex right now are 14. And the charts are showing it. And there are different reasons behind it. So, saying all that, let me just practice what I preach. Let's focus. So, let's do that. All right. Um, we are coming into earnings season. Big way. We have JP Morgan tomorrow. Citigroup blasted the numbers. Markets took it up a lot higher. We should have been long Citigroup. I'm an idiot. I didn't think of that. But, you know, I admit it. Um, Lululemon. Major re specialized retailers, and it's all about specialized retailers, by the way. Ulta Beauty, Lululemon, things like that. Not like general retailers. Went through the roof. Should have looked at it, but I didn't know they were going to do a forward guidance saying their numbers are going to be uh, far higher than what the street expects. So, um, so saying all that, we are coming into earnings seasons. There's going to be lots of ups and downs, but net net. I have a whole bunch of ideas that I, I recommend. Um, and the final decision always lies with you guys to play the earnings trades or prior to the earnings trades. And those are posted on the real-time Twitter feed. Okay. Um, what else do we have? We have the China trade talks, which are going extremely well. Congratulations, Mr. President. He's doing a great job. His business team, uh, the Chinese premier, is supposedly going to be here at the end of the month to discuss things further, and that's good news. Brexit, what a mess. The Brits rule the world. Well, we're hanging from trees, right? <laughs> Literally. And now they can't even figure out Brexit, so good luck to them. So Brexit vote is tomorrow. Uh, Theresa May, the... The uh, uh, UK Premier, Prime Minister, Miss uh, no, Mrs. PM, uh, is uh, going to suffer a inglorious defeat in Parliament because not even her own party members, forget the opposition, which is the Labour Party, is not going to support it. And they might have a second referendum. 
a second vote on whether they should go in with Vexit or not. Now, regardless of the political and uh, philosophies and all that stuff, my feeling, which is the feeling of most business leaders, um, and this is a nonpartisan feeling, is that um, that uh, Brexit itself in its form right now is a disaster for the UK economy, and that certainly will affect, um, you know, not going to affect our economy that much, but still it will, and for the global markets. So they got to do something. So I'll leave it at that. Okay, how about that? Um, the other uh, risk uh, that uh, the Fed risk is out of the picture. I've explained that repeatedly in um, in um, I'm reading a text showing up on my two iPhones here. Uh, breaking news uh, and uh, the other uh, uh, risk about the Fed and Jerome Powell. I've ex- uh, covered extensively. I've been dead right on uh, his you know his approach to what he's doing. Um, his nerdy approach to some of the comments that he made and stuff. So that risk for now is out of the way. And uh, one huge piece of news, which I uh, tweeted on my real-time uh, feed, was that um, uh, Janet Yellen, I call you, I used to call her Ma Baker from the Boney M song, if anyone remembers, okay. Ma Baker. So you don't want to mess with her. You know, she's a Brooklyn, she's a, she's, she's a Brooklyn tough lady, all right? You try to you try to uh, mug her, she's going to put you down real fast. So she commented that she feels that, and believe me, she was uh, she knows the Fed, okay? Um, that uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, Bank of America, uh, Jerome Powell at the head right now uh, is uh, probably not going to raise rates at all in 2019. You know, markets care more about that stuff than the rest of the garbage that happens out there. Trust me, you know, the Fed controls the liquidity, the quantitative uh, tightening which is going on right now, all kinds of stuff. So if they are not looking to raise rates at all, according to what she said, um, yeah, I can you can rest assured the markets are going to go nuts higher in due time, in due time. So um, what else can I think of? A primary thing that we have to watch out for are earnings warnings. Uh, major companies coming out and saying, you know, our, our earnings are going to completely be a disaster because of the tariffs. And uh, all that stuff, you know, a loss in demand, things like that. We got to watch out for that. I'm fully cognizant of that. And um, but aside from that, um, really immediate risk that we're looking at, we um, I really can't think of too many. If anyone comes across anyone, any other thing that I should be looking at uh, or thinking of, uh, then um, please let me know. Something else might have slipped my mind, but. Um, when it does come to my mind, I'll remind you guys. So let's focus. So first thing we're going to focus on is actual trading. After all, we're all traders. You know, uh, I'd like to think, oh, I'm a long-term prognosticator of the markets and I read the markets at will. But you know, the reality is we want to make money. That's what we do. We make the money. We support our families. We give it to our, uh, our favorite charities. We help people. That's what we do. All right. And, uh, you know, this ain't the wolf of Wall Street here at Clueless A Trading, you know. We're not doing drugs. We're not doing stupid stuff. And we're not like, you know, we're playing drug stocks and we're doing really well on those. But um, but we're not we're not doing all that garbage. You know, we're good people. We're good patriots and we're good people here at Clueless A Trading. And that's what I love about my members. So saying all that. um. First chart to focus on. I'm going to walk you guys through it. This is an ascending triangle. Change the color. Make it a little bit uh, easier on the eyes. There we go. Right there. There's your ascending triangle. Ascending triangles, I've showed you guys repeatedly prior to it. In overall, at least have one breakout. After that, it pulls back retest the breakout level and uh and it breaks out it breaks out then it comes back retest the uh the the upper end of the triangle you might want to call it a uh a, a neckline because this is after all a very large inverse head and shoulder and then it dis- and then either it bounces up or it falls within the trading zone again. 
which is roughly between 2590 and on a wider level 2520 which i've repeatedly said and remember everything you do out there especially if it's any major stock not specialized stocks that we trade like new age beverage nbev artillery which are not dependent on the market whatsoever literally but overall whether it's the boeings or the tech stocks um or the spies and the spx's things like that the q's they're all dependent on these type of charts so the wide trading range and the uh, critical support that what i repeated quite a few times today is around the 25 22 level and the markets could very well throughout the earning season for the next two weeks do this we would all like to see it just go all the way up to the high 2600s mid 2600s which is my target right now which is around 2630 around that level yeah it's probably going to get there but to get up towards that level where it's the upper end of this very wide macro channel 2700 that's another roughly 800 points on the dow from here it's not going to happen in one day yeah it can but that's not you know i'm not a wishful trader i'm looking at the practicality and the quantifiable move that the markets can make so let's clean this out so let's say this is an ascending triangle very clearly drawn and it break out of the ascending triangle first over the first neckline remember this was the powell drop when he made that very nerdy stupid comment and when president trump went out at him hard on twitter which i don't really think appropriate but hey you know that's 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 my boy donald okay we're new yorkers you know i say a lot of stupid things too right on the face of people right but um we don't mean any harm that's just the way we are out here so bottom line is this was the powell drop this was the powell recovery on him taking back his comments and the interview and everything that i walked you guys through with my analysis analysis plural with the e and uh and all kinds of stuff then a little pullback and this is where we are we have a megaphone pattern here that's why it's drawn these lovely colors and so the first neckline on the on the um very large inverse head and shoulders which is this and then other multiple head and shoulders look there head head left shoulder right shoulder complex head and shoulders generally are not exactly at the same level but as you look at charts more and more and i know many of you are getting really focusing a lot harder i can feel that because i know like like using good old donald uh, 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 tweet i feel my members and the members do better okay so i'm feeling that some of you are doing a lot better in focusing on the charts and the more you look at it the more they talk to you so here we have a head here we have a left shoulder right shoulder here we had the head big one back on the 25th you know that after the christmas eve massacre which i will say again was a coordinated attack on the u.s financial markets with a bunch of european socialists oops seriously that's what happened okay george soros is definitely one of the culprits so and a bunch of self-loathing uh hedge fund uh, and uh, dogmatic uh, bears here in the u.s who always want our markets to go down and you know you see them in the media all the time so saying all that um it doesn't mean you have to be bullish all the time but you can't be always bearish like every morning you wake up you can think like oh my god that's it we're down another thousand points because that's not the way you were raised to think that everything's going to fall apart every morning so you've got to look at the market that way it's called cognitive bias if you are overall bullish and then you look at the chart which is showing you the bullish pattern then you're going to believe it more than if you're overall extremely bearish all the time always wanting the u.s markets to fall on its knees which means the u.s economy is going to fall on its knees that means the u.s uh, uh, dominance on the world is going to fall on its knees well then i'm sorry i can't subscribe to your philosophy okay so saying all that um uh, uh not the head and shoulder and uh and then you get into this um and then you get into this trading range um which is in between uh, uh uh the two uh this is the main neckline right there and um 
And this is where we are right now, as we speak, with futures up 12. Right now, this is a real-time chart. So, overall, what it looks like, we will probably have a breakout. Uh, JP Morgan, I mentioned that uh, very openly today, uh, clearly, uh, that uh, JP Morgan is a big heavyweight, right? Dow Jones uh, uh, has a power on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, has a power on the banking index, uh, the KBW, uh, the BKX, the whole works. So JP Morgan's numbers are going to be very important tomorrow. And uh, Citigroup was very well today, uh, did very well today. Uh, we missed it. Uh, but um, so if that happens, then we have a good shot to break out over the next supply point. Remember, these are these lines are drawn based on where the big selling happened, right? They're supply zones. It's all about supply and demand, where the demand comes in to buy, i.e. the blue arrows, where the supply comes in to sell, i.e. the red arrows. Same thing with charts, same, uh, same thing with indices, same thing with stocks. I try to put as many arrows as possible without cluttering the charts too much. But by now, you guys should be able to draw your own arrows on the levels. You know, If I just draw a line with no arrows, you're like, okay, I see what he's saying. You should do that. If you have no idea on it or if you need some help, reach out to me. I will be more than happy to walk you through it. I'll be more than happy to have you uh, 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 on the advanced coaching sessions. But whichever the case, I'm always here to help. So within reason. And then you have to help yourself. So um, so the next supply zone comes in here at the 2606 level. But overall, this is a bullish pattern. And I've been saying it all day long. And that means that um, if we break out and we head towards the 2630 level, that's the next supply level or the next big, not big, but that's the next resistance and uh, from the previous supply level from the middle of December 2018. The full pattern completion, as you guys can clearly see, the full pattern completion, at least for the short term, comes in play at around the 2787, 2700 level. That's a lot. That means it's another 800 points on the Dow from here to here. Can it happen? It sure can. We just need a couple of good earnings numbers. On the shorter term basis, this is the zone that I'm looking at. Your long spy calls, you want to be very, you know, you want to keep an eye on this type of chart. You should construct this chart on your site, on investing.com. It's free. If you cannot construct it, reach out to me. DM me on Twitter. Send me a text on the ones who have my number. Or send an email to support at cluedosate.com or frank.r at cluedosate.com. But do not just sit there blindly, and I'll say it, no offense meant to anyone, like an idiot, and make and, and all this money that's being made overall through these nice volatility swings pass you by and you're sitting there, SOA, sitting on you know what, and doing nothing. Just don't do that. Doesn't matter if you have one contract. You got to be involved. So, this does the real critical support is twenty five twenty three. If it breaks here, short the heck out of the market all the way down for another two hundred points. Because there is nothing here, from a pattern symmetry standpoint, that will stop the market from going down two hundred points or so. Um, if we break below the 25.23. Otherwise, here, what other people like to say, oh, it's just choppy, which is just a juvenile term of saying the market's moving within a range. The market's always choppy. The market's been choppy since the market started trading, since the Great Depression, since the 1800s. The market's always been choppy. So when I hear people say, oh, the market's going to, it's in a chop zone. I'm like, what kind of stupid talk is that? This is my opinion. All right? It's just, that doesn't make any sense. Make money off the chop if you're an active trader. Otherwise, stay long on the swing trade based on what I'm showing on my charts and my patterns and such. This megaphone on the downside is 2523, 2522. And right now, he's trying to push above the megaphone as we speak. And uh, and resistance comes in at 2606. You can see that the ascending triangle of the Powell drop on December 19, 2018, is we are above that. We are repeatedly trying to stay above this green line. Now, 
if somebody thinks, oh, well, it's all fine and good, isn't it, these lines, well, then you're not a trader because this is how real traders trade. They look to see what's in front of them, what the downside can be, whether or not it's worth uh, dollar cost averaging on the options and buying that tactical dip or whether it's just good to just be a monkey on a hot tin roof, leave everything and, 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 and just see the markets gap open every day where you could very easily sell it and rebuy it back during the day. If, if you don't buy every dip, only if we are seeing significant tactical signals, candles and such. I live by the candles and um, that it is going to be worth buying into. So this is the first chart that you need to uh, focus on big time. And uh, let's move on to the next one. Let's flip through. This is uh, a more of a esoteric, like a longer term type of picture. I haven't used the Fibonacci channels for a while. And I decided to draw it because it looks really pretty. Just kidding. All right. But Fibonacci channels do work. And the upper end, uh, you see the Fibonacci uh, numbers here. One is 100, 100%. Next one is 78.6. Next one is 61.8. This is your standard Fibonacci, except it's slanted. It's a channel. Um, I took the bottom of the channel from, uh, uh, from the 1st of October, 2000 and, uh, sorry, 10th of January, 2018. And when the, when the, when, I saw these lines, and this is how I you know, do things here, and I teach all this stuff on the advanced coaching session really well. And keep in mind that every new member or free trial subscriber gets to sit and or directly work with me on two free complimentary sessions. This is not a marketing pitch. It's extremely important to you guys, all right? Every service tries to tell, sell you some sort of method. I'm not trying to sell you any method. I'm trying to teach you the way it works, why it works so that when you look at the chart, you can get at least 50 to 60% of the messaging that's coming out of it. After that, it's up to you to learn how to manage your trades. So, um, so this is the 50% Fibonacci. So except going sideways, horizontal, this is a channel. And the 50 Fib, if you follow this line, comes up towards the 216, 218 level right there. On one of my previous charts from last week, I actually put arrows here just to direct people to, to, to focus and see, you know, what these lines mean. But anyone, um, you know, uh, can anyone can read this. You have the 38.2 here, follow the line, and the 38.2 comes in at somewhere around 26.10. The zero, this is where the origination point is, is the uptrend line. 2606. We were doing all fine till we dropped today. And then I drew another channel. So, does this mean that it's definitely going to go there? Nope. Does this mean I know what my downside is in a big way? Yes. If JP Morgan completely misses all kinds of horrible stuff, we are going to go down to 2561 which is 20 points from here, from where we are right now. Actually, this is the S&P 500, so it's not a real-time chart here, right? So um, this is not real-time E-minis, which are up about 13 points right now, 12.25, 12, 12 and a quarter. So we can drop. This is the close today. So uh, we can drop 20 points. So 20 handles on the, e uh, on the SPX is roughly about 120 to 140 points. By now, you should know that. It's a factor of roughly six or seven. I like to take the higher conversion rate, seven. So the Dow Jones will be down roughly 140 points. Does that completely freak me out? No. I have to see whether the reaction is there and then recommend myself also see whether I need to step in. Do I think the market is going to hell in the hand basket? No. At this point, no. Unless we start to see technical deterioration and really terrible num earnings numbers and forward guidance from some major companies. So then we know what the downside is. 20 s and points is roughly 140 Dow points. Is it going to feel good when we're overall generally long? No. But you also have to manage your trades. You have to know what capital you're deploying out there. Put your whole account on the long side. Well, you know, 
that's completely stupid. So saying all that, um, if we recapture 2606, then we are going to enter over this beautiful uptrend line that we were in till this was Friday's close. This was the gap down open today. Active traders could very easily trade these type of swing moves and make it uh, a sort of swing. Move. Day trading moves makes them very decent sum of money. Okay, that's another day's topic, and I've covered it quite well. You can be at a loss at the open and still make enough money to be green for the day within the first two hours of trading on these type of bounces. So, um, we have. So we know what the what the downside is. Uh, upside, we enter this move here. We're moving higher. Now, somebody might say, "What are these lines all the way up here?" This one line. Uh, this is the hundred Fibonacci level, which is the full completion. Let's let's see where it lands up. This goes up to roughly the same levels that we talked about before, around 2620, 2630 on the S&P 500. Look at that, right there. This number, some people will wonder, what is that? That's the Fibonacci extension number. That's on a massive move higher. Government reopens. China trade talks. You know, Premier gives a date. Uh, I forget his name. Li Kuan. I, I can't say it. Uh, Chinese Vice Premier, very smart gentleman. Um, he puts a date that he's coming to the United States. Then we could very easily be up here on this level here. This is the extension. 1.61 or 161.8 percent Fibonacci retracement 2644. So this is so very important. All right, let's move on. This is the same as this type of chart. We have the trading charts. We're in a nice, beautiful band range trading, as we call it. Um, you don't need to change, uh, trade every 15 minutes. I mean, if you wanna, that's fine with me. Uh, but at least you know where you stand. This is the one that I showed. Very, very important. I love this chart. I, I'm actually for once patting myself on the back and saying, man, I drew this to true perfection. This is a beautiful uptrend line. We know what the downsides are if we slip and slide. And uh, this is a very, very important chart, guys. Okay. For a short to intermediate term player, time wise. This is your large 60 minute chart showing you. A very large inverse head and shoulder can't get any better than this. Okay. And this is where we are right now. What we call the bull flag consolidation channel within a range. If you want to be a technical trader, you don't necessarily need to be an expert in this stuff, but you have to understand what I'm putting out there. Charts I'm putting out there with a couple of explanatory comments is not there for show. It's not there for cosmetic purposes. It's there for a technical purpose so you all can make more money. That's all. Here's your bull flag consolidation channel. Breaks out. This is obviously a slightly intermediate term picture. This acceleration channel, that's an acceleration channel right there. Let me make this a little bit thicker so you guys can see it. There you go. We, I call it an acceleration channel. Once it enters that, we could get up to 27, 25. You know what the media is going to say? Oh, my God, look at this market. It's on fire. All kinds of good stuff, right? Well, we're always two steps ahead. We are. Look at my previous webinars, my video cast in the most awful times in the market and what I predicted might happen or forecasted might happen. I would say a good seven, eight out of 10 times. It's exactly the way it's happened, if not more. Can't get it better than this, okay? Seriously. So this is your, what we call a bull kill zone. I'm sorry, a bear kill zone, which is between 2640 and 2720. I don't even know if we're going to get into this zone. But all I'm saying is there's a possibility. Looks pretty damn good. If we break below 2522, I repeat, we have the bull kill zone. You go short. 
and hold short. So that's your negative bear, the bull kill zone. That's your positive, which is the bear kill zone. Where all those European billionaire socialists like George Soros and everybody who keeps on shorting the United States financial markets all the time, not like, you know, sometimes, like all the time. Including what happened to that uh, 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 German Nazi, Dr. Faber, Dr. Doom and Gloom, all the time. You know, the United States is completely finished. You know, financial markets are all done. You know, so much debt, blah, blah, blah. Where did that guy go? He married some uh, Thai teenager or something and he lives in Thailand, right? Good for him. <clears throat> so, garbage. It's okay to be tactically bearish at times. And if you see major trend changes. And we are paid intraday, short-term, short trades with an overall long bias. So, but to be consistently bearish on the markets. Remember, when you see a fund manager or a big shot analyst like Gunlack, who comes on, he's a bond guy, after all, he's not even a stock guy, come in and say that the U.S. debt issue is such an explosive issue. Yeah, it, 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 it's an explosive issue, but not like something that's going to happen tomorrow. You know they're talking their book. They want to scare people into selling so they can short harder. He's got stock traders in his team too who are shorting the E-minis. So they're all talking their book. Everybody has a hidden agenda. E-mini futures right now are 15. Great. Will it be open 15? I don't know. Tomorrow. But I'm just showing you what can happen. This little move alone here, if we get up to here and bump heads before we pull back again, is around 26, uh, what is it? It's around 26.30. Do you know what your spy calls are going to do tomorrow morning, even at this level? I mean, if you, you know, just chicken out and sold because the markets pulled back 100 points after almost going positive, after being down 200 some points or more, whatever it was today, because I had some stuff to do in the morning. I came in a little bit late. I was watching on my on my iPhone. Well, good luck to you guys. Because if you're not set up right, you're never going to make the frigging money. That's it. You can't always chase the market when it's up 200 points. Yeah, sometimes it goes nuts and goes up five, six, seven hundred 700 points. But that's not, that's a rarity. You always have to be set up prior to it. You have to cost average. You have to not feel good when you close that screen because you're down 30% on those spy uh, calls. Or SPX calls or IW, I mean, our QQQs. We haven't recently been playing the IWM. I'm going to start focusing on that. Or, or the DIA calls, you know, diamonds. Di it's okay. Algos are not meant, algo high frequency trading black boxes, guys, are not meant to keep you happy. It's meant to keep you on your toes, terrified. They want to take your long position so they can basically run with it the next day and the following 48 hours. Why doesn't anyone get that? Oh, I know most of you do, but still. Everybody's always freaking so scared all the time. Look at the swing charts. This is an intermediate term swing chart. What about the longer term swing charts we're going to cover in the next couple of minutes that I keep on showing? The daily, the weekly, the monthly. I think I made my point. Let's move on. So this is your bull kill, uh, bear kill zone, ultimate bear kill zone. This is a mini bear kill zone here. And this is the bull kill zone where the bulls basically, you know, where you short. And it just means nothing. It can do this. Which is repeatedly done. It goes up, fails here, pulls back, crashes, and creates a nice W pattern like that. Remember, it's not just one earnings that determines the market. There are so many companies, we're just at the cusp of it. There are so many great in US businesses that dominate the world of technology. Aviation, the Boeings of the world, the Lockheed Martins. 
retail companies, beverage companies, I mean, the, all these pot companies, there's nothing to do with China. The Chipotles of the world, which keep on going through the roof and then pulls back three, four, five, six, seven points one day. That's minor compared to what the overall charts are. It's not just one company that determines the earnings season. Just keep that in mind. Now, if we get consistently the big companies coming up with crappy guidance and really bad numbers, then that's a different story. The charts will start to show us and we'll react accordingly. So here is a chart which you don't need to be a rocket scientist to look at. First of all, it's so simplistically drawn with supply demand levels, with candles that can very easily be seen with the naked eye. I don't know what to say. Pattern-wise, I've repeated it over and over again, and I will not repeat it over. Well, I will actually. Why not? Okay. So here's your real pattern completion, 2,800. Somebody said, well, when do you think we're going to go to 2,800? My question is, when will you start acting like a real trader and buy these big monster reversals and first make the money instead of always chasing the market at the higher end of the scale, then we get a minor, minor, minor consolidation for two days and you freak out again. So that's a question you have to ask yourself. At one point or another, we are going to go to 2800. When? I would say we, uh, this is not realistic, but if things work out the way I explained it on the bullish side with the earnings primarily, the China issue and the government shutdown doesn't keep on going on forever. Then we can go to 2800 by the month, uh, some, some, sometime by March. On a weekly, you know, that's it. Or maybe February. Remember, violent, the, the, the uh, uh, excessive violence on the downside creates excessive movements on the upside. It's called pattern symmetry. Now, it does not create excessive, excessive exuberance by the individual investor, i.e. all of you and myself included. I'm a more disciplined tactical uh, uh, trader, so I will remove myself from that comment. But the average retail RET, retail emotional trader, and the average fund manager out there, and the media, and mom and pop, who basically have now put everything almost in the money market asset accounts. Remember, I come from the mutual fund background at Putnam Investments, my first peon job as a junior analyst. Back there, back then in the late 80s, early 90s, I saw this happen. I had no clue about the markets at that time. You know, I had an interest in it. Money funds surged three trillion in assets as investors flee. Guys, that is a beautiful headline. I put it out there on the Twitter feed. That mom and pop includes many of maybe many of my members. I hope not. Everybody's fleeing the U.S. stock markets when we are up almost two thousand points from the bottom. They're all fleeing because they're all scared we're going to drop another 5,000 points. Sure we can at one, at one point or another. But remember, you guys are not in that crowd. You're at Clueless A Trading. So wake the F up, as they say in New York. Okay? Three trillion plus in money market accounts? What are they waiting for? They'll all come in at this end. Mark my words. I've been dead right on it before. I will be right on it again. They're all going to come into the market right here, and then the market's going to have a frigging thousand-point pullback because this is pattern completion at around the 2,800 level. That's just the way it works. Okay? It never changes. Never. When I first started to understand the market was around 1997, 1998. Because I started on Wall Street in 1996. When I was at Putnam Investments, I understood bonds a lot, credit markets, blah, blah, blah. You know, I had the guy in the market. This but when I came to Wall Street around the 1996, 1997 period, that's when I started to really follow the markets. And I always saw the same thing with mom and pop investors, in, um, 
even high net uh, net high net worth clients and the institution investors the small pension funds medium sized pension funds that we dealt with they were a little bit more easier to talk to it's always the same i repeat again money funds surge 3 trillion in assets as investors flee the us stock markets where do you think they want to put their market in the russian stock market in the Cybe- in in the, in the uh, whatever albanian stock market i'm just throwing out names the congolese stock market they're fleeing the best most liquid deepest finest companies in the world the united states financial stock market they're all fleeing including some of some of you hopefully not many of you what the heck is going on that is the most contrarian indicator ever yes we'll have volatility yes we'll have three four five hundred six hundred points down but god damn it markets don't top when you have three trillion plus in money market assets by us us citizens calling up their mutual funds their brokers their financial advisor saying, oh please put me in the money market account end of story and you know why I get so passionate about it? Not because I'm, pa- I'm a crazy nut but passionate about the market. It's because I worked in that industry. I dealt with mom and pop in my earlier stages of my career. And nobody ever seems to learn. They all bailed at the end of 2008, 2009. And then the market took off like a rocket. They all bailed in 2001, 2002. And then the market took off like a rocket. I didn't it. I can't even tell you. Okay, so bottom line is 2650 is a major, major resistance right there. Very large uh, sell candle. A lot of people trapped in this because it was looking like the markets were going higher. This was back in December, and this was actually a bear flag, and then bang, bang, bang. Right? So this level here, uh, which is roughly about 300 or so more points, maybe a little bit more, um, I would say you need to really, you know, pull back hard on on long positions um all other positions are, are i mean all the other supply zones or sell zones have been marked very clearly please focus on this chart this is a daily this cuts out the noise of what happens intraday this cuts out the noise whether donald is putting out a good tweet or a stupid tweet whether the chinese are say something good or stupid whether um, whatever, whether Alibaba's main guy is saying, hey, you know, China's slowing down. Well, tell me something. I don't know. <laughs> you know, of course it's slowing down. That's why they're at the negotiating table. For God's sakes, can they pump up their economy? Yes, they can. Did you see the news? I might have posted it yesterday. China just opened up their markets to a point where individual invest uh, FDI, which is foreign direct investment, can go up to three hundred billion dollars. How do you like that? They went from or six hundred billion. They went from three hundred billion to six hundred billion. That foreign direct investment can come into the Chinese markets without restrictions. That's called opening up markets. That's what a trade war is going to do for you. They just opened up the markets in a huge way. And you don't think the world, and especially U.S. smart investors and, uh, and uh, money guys, uh, uh, fund managers, hedge funds, uh, pension funds, whatever, are going to go in deep with the world's one quarter of the world's population in China? Think. Think for a minute. Think. You think, they, uh, you think they're going to all go into Canada? I love Canada. My brother-in-law is Canadian. He's a Canuck, right? They call him Canucks. Crazy hockey guy. Rich guy. Real estate. Fin- he's in the financial business, too. But you think the Americans just putting your money to Canada because they're a great consumer? There's no people there. You want to go where people, the demographics are exploding. That's China. That's Asia. Middle East to a certain degree. So that's what happens, all right, it's big stuff. All right, full pattern completion. You can see the look; it's clear as sky. I don't need to explain this thing. We break out over here. We move here. Maybe we we'll pull back a little bit. Let me move up to the next level. Sure, that's just volatility. That's the way it goes. But these are the type of swing charts you got to keep your eye on in order to effectively have the discipline 
to hold on to something, cost average, and sit there. Buy time. Don't have to buy next week or the week after. Buy, you know, you don't want to go more than like two weeks because a lot of all because movements are so fast and furious that if you pay up a lot to buy time, then uh, it doesn't make any sense. So you don't want to go out like two, three months because I don't know what's going to happen in two, three months. Because if these like levels are 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 uh, this downtrend line, for example, which is around twenty seven hundred, wow, that's way up there. Are are hit within a matter of days because that's how it happens, right, guys? So um. I'm going to sell. So why pay something three months out with a fatter premium? You're paying the, uh, the, 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 the market makers for selling those options to you when you can buy it two weeks out and make money. This, is, this ain't grandma's market, grandpa's market anymore. All right, let's move on. Next one is um, uh, next one is what I'm be showing a lot, which is your daily. The daily, I mentioned one thing to you guys, and I mentioned this to you again. And many of you remember. I know some of my good friends here, here will remember. When you start to see on the daily, let me construct the chart. Not construct it, scale it in. Okay. So here's your big macro channel. Okay. Here's your 50 day moving average in this dotted line, which is around 26.18. Here's your, these are the e mini dailies. Here's your 34-day moving average, the, the, the dark orange line, at 25.72. We're above that. This is where we were at the close. And everyone freaked out. Not everyone. Some people freaked out. Like, oh, my God. Like, look at the market. Oh, I'm so tired of this. I'm just kidding. I'm not. I love you guys. Okay? But everything was fine. And what was the and, and, and now we're, if we break out over the 50 day moving average, which is over 2620 on the e minis, uh, we know where we can go. This was your, this line here is your 2018 break even level. Remember that big thumb? This was a 2018, that's a 2671. That's almost close to uh, the downtrend line. Do you think the market wants to recapture back and go break even for 2018? 20, yeah, 2018, which was last year, starting level. Yeah, I think so. Which also happens to be this massive downtrend line. All that stupid talk, are we out of the woods yet? Like, cut the out of the woods yet crap, okay? Trade the markets for real big money from these points higher, out of the woods yet. What does out of the woods yet mean? You go out of the woods, somebody's going to shoot you because they think you're a deer coming out of the woods. I mean, such stupid comments so many people make. So what is most important from a technical standpoint is watching the stochastics. The full stochastics, easiest thing you can watch. I watch a lot of indicators. You guys know that. I only show a few. As If it's moving sideways, you better not be sure in the market other than quick scalps intraday because it's going to burn you. It's going to burn you. It's like what was that? You know, the the in, on well, uh, not uh, actual movie Wall Street. Remember the English financier? Because I'm gonna burn you. Well, they're gonna burn you guys. Okay, on the stake if you're really heavily short and the full stochastics are moving sideways over 80. That means the market has really strong relative strength or relative strength index. Okay, very simple to read. Your financial advisor your guru or some other service that you follow might never explain these things to you guys. It's really simple. If it's moving above this zone here in the overbought zone, this market as it did way back here when it moves sideways, when it, yeah, every single time. And these sideways moves generally last about two or three weeks on the daily, let's say two weeks. Here, there's sharp moves up, down, hit the upper end of the channel, boom. Well, if we cross over, remember, we were we were well below. Standard deviation was probably minus seven or minus, yeah, I would say minus seven. That's well below standard deviation movement away from the moving averages, which are these two lines. Now we are just getting back on the highway, which are the moving averages. I know some of you who have been with me have heard me say this repeat, you know, multiple times. Well, I'll say it again. Once we move above 
the moving averages, you get that big fat short squeeze, which is upper end of this channel, which is around 2700. Watch this when I show it. If it's starting to buckle below the 80, or we're starting to see something like this, then obviously that's when you want to lower your long positions and go and, you know, keep some short hedges in place. And that level would be around 25, 27 or 25, 23, like I just showed you guys. We break this, the market's going down. It's not rocket science. It's called focus. Next one. Simple one hour chart, downtrend line. I mean, it's as clean as it can get. Here's your Powell drop. Here are the further things. This is the same chart as this, except I tried to keep it simple by just showing you this. There you go. So if you're trading today and you're freaking out, all you have to do is look at this chart that I showed a few times. Support levels. It's all mechanical, guys. It's all mechanical. Where's my monthly? Okay, so here we're now we're talking business, all right? This is real swing trading. You know, sometimes, you know, you, some members, you know, drop out and, they, I, and I always reach out to them because I always like to find out. I'm always trying to improve myself, the qu quality of the content that I can deliver and how I can make the service better. And they say, well, I really don't have any time that much, you know, the markets, you know, this and that. I said, really? How about doing some swing trade, sticking with the trade, sticking with the trade? Well, you know, listen, I've heard every single excuse that you can dig up from six feet under when it comes to the stock markets and trading, both from professional investors, individual investors, and from all my members that I can write a book on it. You cannot give me one excuse or one comment about the market that I haven't heard. All right? Seriously. And never feel that special that the market's targeting you. The market doesn't even freaking know you exist. So this is the ultimate swing trading chart. Look at it. It's a weekly. The This hasn't even turned yet, the MACD. But what's turning before the MACD are the histograms. That's why this line here. I didn't put that line there for cosmetic reasons because it looks good. Look at that. Once this starts turning, you're getting up there. You're, you're entering that big ascending triangle. That big one. Up from there. There. And that would be over the 2700 level. That's when the shorts, the hardcore ones are like, uh oh. Maybe the market really wants to go and retest the highs. I'm not even going to go there yet till I see what's going on. But what this is looking like, looking pretty damn good. Why? Because I am really pretty much a simple guy when it comes to technical stuff. I could show you complicated technical charts. Your heads are going to spin. But that's not my business. My business is to take complicated things and make it simple. I want you to go tell everybody and get some referrals so we have no more new blood in our group because we lost a few weaklings who never wanted to look at my charts, always traded on prices, and God bless them because I wish all of them well. Market downturns always mess around with people's heads. But real traders never leave the battlefield. Like real Marines don't run. At least ours don't. All right. You tactically change your battle plans as you move along. Sometimes you retreat, you sit quietly. Sometimes you engage hard. It's time to engage hard right now, even though we're getting to certain levels here where the markets are getting overbought, but not on the weekly chart. Look at this. This falling wedge. This was a falling wedge, okay? Now it's breaking out. It's gone over the midline here that I've drawn. This starts to turn, which I think it will. Why do I think it will? Because these histograms, generally, when they are shrinking, tend to go positive. Remember, it's a weekly. 
So if they go positive, we got maybe a few more weeks of a rally left. It hasn't happened yet. They're shrinking. So let's say it shrinks like this next week. One more week, one more week, and boom, it goes positive. Every single time, even through this massive volatility that we incurred the first part of 2018, which one undoubtedly was the most volatile year in modern history, in recent history. It still went positive for three weeks. And then it stayed positive, and then this happened. So, my opinion, given what I'm seeing, I'd like to see this turn faster, no question about it. I'd like to see this thing. This is perfect. I mean, there's nothing about the stochastics that I can complain about. It's moving higher. You want to stay long. That's how the swing discipline comes in. But we're reaching some major resistance levels, and we'll see. But whichever the case, this is very positive. That's how you stay focused. Next is the monthly. Hallelujah. What can I say? Does this make me like flip around, do cartwheels? I can't do cartwheels. I can do an inversion table that I do. I stick go upside down completely so my brain just drains itself out of blood. That, that's serious. I do inversion tables almost every day. I have an inversion table on my house. I strap myself in. I go zero gravity flat, and then I go upside down. I'm dead serious. Now, why do I say that? Because it clears my mind. Besides from praying to God, which clears my mind a lot. So what do you think is going on here, guys? You think this is a joke? This is your monthly chart. Forget the daily, I mean, 15 minute, one hour, daily, weekly. This is the frigging monthly chart. And it's having a crossover. It doesn't mean it's not going to have a lot of noise as the crossover is happening because of all the short-term resistance levels on the hourly, on the daily, and the, and the weekly that I've just covered. Of course it will. But look at the bigger picture. It's trying to tell you that the market wants to, at least for now, go higher. Remember, I drew this chart. I showed you this was a 2018 break-even level. And this is this, these upsides, each of these candles, a 1,000 points on the Dow. This is where we were nibbling. This is where the big boys are coming in. This is where we were nibbling. Because I told, I, I showed on this chart. It's not the first time you guys are seeing this. Go to my Twitter feed. It's there before this big hammer reversal happened. This one. So you have a macro falling wedge. These are serious stuff, guys, all right? You have a crossover here. Forget the macro falling wedge for a minute. So the break-even level here is 26.65. That's very decent. I'll take 26.65 any day. That's 400 points from where we are or 500 points from where we are. Do you know what our individual stocks that we trade are going to do? This is really critical. I don't need to emphasize and highlight this point. I even put one of, one of these arrows that I found here on the icon, investing.com, to highlight this. You th if you guys think this is a joke, then you could sh never be a trader. That's serious. Doesn't mean everything's all perfect. Doesn't mean we're not going to have certain down days or intraday, the market pulls back 300, 400 points. It simply means that overall, the patient money, the long-term money, is getting in there because we're seeing it. Once it crosses over the 2018 break-even level at 26.65, which is roughly around 26.70 on the, on the S&P 500, then we are looking at higher levels of around 2,700, I mean 2,800. So this is still, this is good. This is very good. Now, if you, uh, uh, so that's your internals. That's all you got to watch. Is this crossover intact or is it faltering? That's all. Now, if you look at this overall external, which is the chart, this is how I teach my ECS2. This is your external. This is your internal. That's your heartbeat telling you're improving. Even though you feel like crap when you're waking up in the morning, your internals are telling you that after the traumatic 
accident that the market went through, the internals are getting better. That means your organs are healing. If you look at this overall picture, since 2009, and this article, definitely read it, where money funds surge past $3 trillion in assets. It hasn't been seen since 2011. You know why it hasn't? I didn't start my service till 2014, April. So we, this is where Clueless Aid Trading started. But I used to post some stock tweets at that time. Mom and Pop left the market. First of all, they were not here. Mom and Pop came in here. Then this happened in 2011. Okay. When I, when I say mom and pop, that's the average investor out there. And retail emotional traders, RET traders. And they got, they they basically, you know, the, the, the level of money that they have taken out of the market here since December is the same as what happened here. What happened after this? Stochastics. Technical speak volumes. What happened here? One second. This was a monthly chart. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six months. Six months of a decline. Everyone gave up. Two months of a decline. 2015. Everyone gave up. Look at the internals. Two months of a decline, but that was at the beginning. Or that was uh, right after 2018 started and the markets took off. So stochastics turned from here. So that is not relevant to these two points that we're talking about. We're talking about here, cataclysmic drop in the market overall, right? On a monthly basis, unheard of. We're going to recession. The Fed's our enemy, blah, 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 blah. So markets just, boom. There was a macro liquidation program, big hedge funds, shorting and collapsing. A lot of them you won't even hear names about till a couple of months down the road. Mark my words. So what happened? This happened. So if you just... Stay disciplined, for God's sake. That's my mission statement. Is try to share what I've learned. And stick to these charts. I'm not saying it's going to be exactly like this, but I've already given you guys, based on my charts, 2,000 plus points. 50, 60, 100 plus points in individual stocks, for God's sake. Just since the Christmas Eve massacre. On, 12, on December 24th. Do not be an idiot and start going heavy on the market when we are out here. When this thing surges up, you want to be at the cusp of the move, the inflection point, not when everything's just feeling good. On that note, you guys are the best. Thank you for attending. I shall see you guys soon. Stay long. The mini futures are up 16. Anybody who listened to my, look, my alerts are just guidance. Bought those spy puts, they're going to get rewarded. I mean, spy calls. The spy puts were a hedge. Bought a little bit. They were like around 90 cents a dollar. Most of them are long, right? We have long positions. Spy calls, 258.60s. We got the NVIDIAs, which are doing tremendously well. And we nibbled that other stuff. They're going to be hugely rewarded tomorrow morning. As has happened many 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 times before on that note god bless you all god bless the united states of america god bless the president trump and his business team for doing what he needs to be done and let's get the government open and get things done all right that's all stay tactical kill the demons in your head good night